If you are new to the world of data, you might start hearing a lot of buzzwords from big data to IoT, data science, data engineering, and phrases like data is the new oil. In this tutorial, I will be covering some important buzzwords about the data and what they really mean. So let's dive in. We are living now in the data-driven age and data is generated everywhere. We people, we generate massive amount of data as we speak. Each click on the internet, each search, email, or even if we are ordering something online, we generate data. We spend hours every day on the social media, liking, commenting, searching. Our smartphone is just all time uploading data about where you are, how fast you are moving, and everything we do online is now stored and tracked as data. Not only our smartphones and computers are connected to the internet and generates data, but also we have something called smart home. We can connect any device at our home to the internet, just put the word smart before it. We have smart mower, smart lightning, smart fitness, voice devices, security systems, all those devices could be connected to the internet and start generating massive amount of data. And this is what we call Internet of Things IoT. IoT is the concept of connecting any device, anything, to the internet in order to generate and exchange data. Not only we have IoT at our home, but also everywhere. We are living in the digital transformation. In the industry and manufacturing, you might heard of the concept Industry 4.0, the first industrial revolution introduced in Germany. It's all about smart factories connecting machines and devices to the internet in order to exchange data. And now we can find IoTs in the cities. We are trying to implement those smart cities where we're gonna connect everything in order to reduce waste, saving money, improving quality. We have as well IoTs in our cars. Our cars are loaded with sensors and devices that are connected to exchange data for many reasons like driver assistance, object recognitions, self-driving systems. The list is just so long. In 2022, we have around 14 billions of physical devices things from small household cooking devices to the sophisticated industrial machines that are connected to the internet generating and exchanging data the amount of generated data every day is from iot's social media websites machines is truly mind-blowing there are currently over 44 zettabytes of data in the entire digital universe that is 21 zeros so that means we are no longer dealing with normal, traditional data. We are dealing now with the big data. So what big data means? There are three indicators that help us to understand whether our data is big and they are defined by the three Vs. The first V is volume. Well, big data is big. With the growth of the internet, mobile devices, social media, IoTs, the amount of generated data from those sources has grown dramatically. The second V is velocity. In normal data processing, we used to process slow data, or we call it patch data, once a day or something, and then we store it in the disk. But in big data worlds, the sources are generating streams of data with very high speeds. That means we have to process and analyze the data in real-time fashion, and then we store it in memory instead of disk. And the third V is variety. In traditional systems, most data types could be captured in raw on structured tables like database or excels. But in the big data worlds, data often comes in semi-structured format, for example, server logs in XML or websites, or the data comes in unstructured format like videos, audios, images, free text. So in big data, we have not only to deal with structured data, but also with semi-structured and unstructured data. So the big data terms means how we can efficiently store, process, and analyze our data when it has huge volume, high speed, and different types in order to reveal significant values for the business. But we still have a problem with that. All those generated data are raw data. Raw data are just unprocessed rows and rows of numbers that are really hard to understand, hard to read, badly structured, and almost has no value to the business. Almost 70% of the world's data are unused. Raw data, if left without processing and refining, is just worthless. Waste of money, waste of space, and it generates digital waste stored in very expensive data centers. And that's why we have the very famous phrase of the famous British mathematician Clive Humby, data is the new oil. Well, it means that we have to extract the raw data like we are extracting oil, we have to refine it, process it, transform it into something useful and has value to the business. 
Well, what this really means is that most of the companies are sitting on a very big field of new oil, raw data, and most of them understood that data is their most valuable asset. They have to extract it, they have to analyze it in order to reveal insights that could help them in order to make faster and better decisions. And that's why most of the companies are hiring army of data workers as we know the demand for data scientists is increasing rapidly and the supply is low. So now what we can do with all those chaos, all those generated unprocessed raw data? Well, we can do the following stuff. So what we can do, we can design or build a data architecture. Data architecture is the process of creating a blueprint on how we organize, process, and store our data into different layers for different purposes. So data architecture make it easier to manage, protect, and access our data. Another thing that we can do with the raw data is data engineering. Data engineering is a very complex process of designing and building data pipelines and data storages. In data engineering, we usually build ETL processes to extract the raw data from multiple sources, then transform it and then load it to the target storage in order to make it highly available and usable for the data scientist or any other end user. Another thing that we can do is data modeling. So data modeling is the process of connecting the dots. So what we're going to do is we're going to put all the data into entities and objects. Then we describe the relationship between those entities in order to help us and help the programs to understand how the data are related to each other. Another thing that you can do with the raw data is we can do data mining. Data mining is the process of analyzing massive amount of raw data in order to discover knowledge, to discover business intelligence like patterns and trends to solve problems and to mitigate risks. Another use of the raw data is that we can use it in machine learning. In machine learning, we are providing the computers with two things. First, the raw and historical data together with the mathematical models and algorithms. So once the computer has those two things, it's going to start training and practicing in order to perform tasks like predictions. So it's like human, the more the machine practice and train, the better and accurate the results going to be. And next we can do data science. Data science is the scientific study of data and it combines three major powers. The power of programming languages, together with the mathematics and statistics, and the knowledge of specific domain, in order to uncover valuable knowledge and insights from our raw data. One more thing that we can use on the raw data and my favorite one is that we can use data visualizations. So data visualizations is the process of converting numbers and raw data, which is normally hard to understand and to read into visuals and charts like bars, by, tree, plots, in order to make it easier to understand and easier to read, which really helps in the decision making. There are many other things and processes that we can apply it on the raw data, but these are the major fields of work that we can use in order to convert the useless raw data into knowledge that has significant impact and value to the business. All right, guys, so that was an introduction to big data terms. And next, we will quickly learn what is business intelligence BI using very simple example. And if you like my content and you want to support the channel, then I really appreciate it. If you support, like and comment, this really going to help the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.